What happens when the entrepreneurs of greatest talent arrive on the continent of greatest need? In a unique challenge, three of Ireland's brightest business brains have agreed to travel to Africa, where they'll put their renowned vision to the test in countries of extreme crisis. Can their brilliance in business be harnessed to help the poorest of the poor? When removed from the boardroom, will their acclaimed ingenuity stand up to scrutiny? And will hope survive when first world values and third world realities collide? Last September, at the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, John O'Shea, the head of aid agency Gold, received a special award. With the country's most successful business people focused on him, John made the most of the moment. But I would like to ask you to take a week or two out of your life and just go and watch people eke out a precarious existence in rubbish heaps where they're fighting with rats for sustenance because the people of the third world, the millions of them, need that entrepreneurial support. The impact of the challenge that John issued would resonate long after the glittering event, with award winner Jerry Canelli agreeing to travel to Kenya. For the first time in a decade, Jerry Canelli, a photographer from Tralee, has some time on his hands and some loose change in his pocket. Jerry's Kerry-based company, Stockbite, became a global leader in the creation of stock photography before he sold the business for 110 million euro. It was a good result for myself and Joanna, and it was a good result for the staff. We all won, and uh, I think Getty got a great business, and uh, we got a great price for it. John O'Shea set up the aid agency Goal almost 30 years ago, and it now operates in 15 countries worldwide. In Kenya, the majority of its work is concentrated in the slums of Nairobi. Well, I'm delighted uh, on a number of counts that Jerry Kennelly has accepted the challenge. He's a journalist. He's a well-known photographer, and as I spent most of my life uh, as a journalist, uh, I'm obviously pleased that a colleague uh, has decided that he has something to offer the poor of the third world. I used to work with him when he was a journalist in the Irish press. A swashbuckling journal, I think, is probably the nicest way to describe Jan. I'm sure he's going to be quite shocked at the level of poverty which he'll encounter uh, when he visits Nairobi. But I'm also sure that he's going to be able to come up with schemes and ideas which will benefit the poorest of the poor. I wouldn't like to have left that sort of challenge uh, from John O'Shea unanswered. You know, as a fellow Kerryman, uh, I'd like to fight fire with fire, and I think that's really good uh, when we get down to, uh, to Nairobi. Nairobi is the capital of Kenya, with a population of over four million. A quarter of those live in shacks of corrugated iron in sprawling slums. Kabira is the largest and poorest slum in Africa. John O'Shea is keen for Jerry to experience how the poor of the city live. One of the places he wants him to visit is the city dump. Jerry, there are many sad and depressing aspects of Gold's work, and I think we're seeing one of them here today. These are rag pickers. They're eking out an existence in the most difficult way possible. Uh, they know of no other way of earning a living. They come in, they spend hour after hour looking for something that they're able to swap or sell uh, for food or for some form of sustenance. What age do they start work here, Jen? You'll Sadly, Jerry, you'll get some children here as young as four and five who come in uh, in search of getting something that he or she can sell. Often you also have babies in here because the mothers, you'll notice, carry the babies on the back. So from the earliest possible age, a ch uh, child is exposed uh, to this type of environment. Two 10-year-old friends, Benjamin and Silas, work together on the dump. They are here seven days a week as they forage for plastic and glass to sell on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
he comes in here at 8 o'clock. When they come in at 8, there's a vehicle that brings food. So they eat, they, scra they scavenge from that vehicle that brings the food, they eat, and then they start looking for the, for the garbage. He went up to class 3, mm -hmm. and the reason he's dropped out of school is that every time he went back home, there was nothing. There was always no food, and therefore, you know, there was no point for him to go back to school. He, would prefer, he preferred to come here where he could get something to eat. Benjamin and Silas, two young kids, totally deprived of a childhood, working here for peanuts. Less than a dollar a day. It's, uh, it's just hard to fathom. It's hard to uh, take it all in. I think that it's just so horrifying to see a young child having to exist in these kind of circumstances. At the edge of the dump, Goal have set up mobile schools where young children can begin to get an education. Teenagers are encouraged to take time out as well. They work in groups to complete exercises set by Goal tutors. It is the first step off the bottom rung. That's really what we have to aspire to, to get as many as possible away from the dump. They want to come away, so it's up to us to provide the alternative. I'm no Bono or John O'Shea, and this is something that I'm out of my depth in completely. But it would be great if, if the enterprise that I'm creating can actually give some opportunity to some of the kids who work here in the long term. If that happens, then I might have done something that was worthwhile. So what is Jerry's proposed enterprise? In response to John's challenge, he intends to establish a locally owned publishing company. He devised the business plan before leaving Ireland, and he's determined to have the venture up and running in just 10 days. My business plan is to create a set of products which will uh, tell the story of Africa. Calendars, postcards, frame and prints, greeting cards, this is the standard of imagery that's available here today. I think we've got to do a lot better than this. We've got to have much better design, and we've got to have a really quality feel about what we're doing here. So that's what we've got to beat, and I'm sure we're up to it. Excellent. Thanks. The venture is to be called Create Africa. Jerry is to fund its setup, and a percentage of the profits is to be distributed to local charities. There is no time to waste. Patrick, it's Jerry Kennelly. How are you? My first step is to network to see how we can leverage contacts, to plug into the Irish Expatriate Network, to plug into the, all of the contacts that I've built up remotely, and to make it work. We want people who are actually uh, got some experience of business or some training of business, and I'm hoping that you might be able to plug us in. We're looking at setting up a publishing company. That's what the mission is, to create some, uh, some really high quality materials. Jerry is looking for local employees and a board of directors for the company. A percentage of, of the revenue is going to go straight to the local charities. Okay. I'd like to give the opportunity for people from John O'Shea's projects uh, to maybe come in at some level in the organisation as employees. His frantic networking has secured Jerry a local board of directors and convinced him that a market exists for his product in Kenya. But launching a startup in 10 days is a very ambitious task. To help Jerry achieve it, he has shipped reinforcements from Ireland. They are working on the first stages of production in a hotel suite. The team includes creative director John McMonagall, digital artist Sean Greeny, and chief technical officer Paul Ash. It's a real challenge in 10 days to actually get a full product range uh, together. But um, right now we're working on the templates. Sean is doing the layouts and I'm helping, helping him with those. As soon as the photographs come in, then it'll get exciting. Jerry takes some of the shots himself, but he has also asked award-winning photographer Alan Betson to travel to Africa to take the bulk of the images. Alan Betson is undoubtedly one of the best photographers in Ireland. He's been shooting uh, on the ground and from the air and has produced some absolutely stunning imagery. It all looked amazing, but you've got to sort of pick out the stuff that's, you know, if, if it's too wide, you just won't see it in a postcard. You know, postcard's tiny, and if you do a big, wide landscape, it's just not going to be seen. So what we did was we, we zoomed in on, on, on sections which looked really good. We went over flamingos, and like the flamingos were like dots, uh, but by, by, by going in really close, 
it was amazing. The, the plane just literally scared them and they, and they ran on the water, leaving circle footprints behind them on top of the water. It was just out of this world. It was incredible. I can definitely see some postcards and uh, prints coming together. <laughs> la, 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 While the Create Africa team continue to develop the product range, Jerry visits Nairobi's Makuru slum, where hundreds of thousands of people are crammed into an area of one square mile. It's pretty devastating poverty really here, to be honest. It's, uh, when you see it at this close level, it's... Uh, it's pretty shocking stuff. I mean, there's the smells and the conditions people are living in. It's, it's horrifying. Located next to Makuru Slum, Goal runs a community education centre. There's standing room only as performers reenact Africa's most tragic story. What we have here, Jerry, is one of our many AIDS programs here in the slums uh, of Nairobi. Uh, the big puppets, the giant puppets, and also the samba dancers, if you like, in the background, they're actually there to draw in the, the people from around. And then we decide to do a play where it's, it's enacted out all uh, about how a young girl has become prey to a man who wants to have sex with her. And uh, they go through the whole business of the importance of a condom and the dangers of HIV and AIDS. And we are getting through, but nobody is cutting ourselves, Jerry. This is a gargantuan problem. Also at this community centre, Goal runs training programmes aimed at giving young people skills that will help them set up their own small businesses. Young single mothers learn hairdressing and knitting, while young boys are taught how to make picture frames and footballs. I think it's great that people are learning some basic entrepreneurial skills and it will allow them to at least have some sort of existence, whether it's hairdressing or picture framing or making footballs. That's where entrepreneurship starts. Uh, I'd like to see value being added at the higher end and I think there, there are ways to, to be more effective uh, very quickly in terms of a value add. And that's what I'm, hope, what I'm hoping to do in the, in the enterprise that we're creating here. Thousands of images have been shot for the Create Africa project. With only six days left to launch, creative director John McMonagall has some tough decisions to make. We're calling all the time, calling. We're missing some good ones, but that's, we haven't time to, to look at everything, you know? People say, oh, I really want this one in, or I want that one in, and we put them all out, and Jerry would go this way, Alan goes this way, and I want to go another way. And uh, so far, there's been no fisticuffs, but uh, sometimes it gets close to it. Normally, a job like this would take a couple of weeks, and we're doing it in days. <laughs> So it's hard work, but it's yeah, it's long good for days. Jeffy, hi, nice to see you. Jerry is looking to recruit two local employees to run the Create Africa venture when he returns to Ireland. What I'm thinking for Create Africa is two things. I think we should do uh, distribution. We should just go out and sort of distribute our product to everybody. And Jerry and Paul Ash interviewed local graduates. My background is in engineering, but I, because I'm very social and outgoing, I thought I could actually go for this. Very impressive. You know, I think uh, they're the right kind of people. There's, there's an entrepreneurial flair there. Irene and Jackie are the chosen ones. They will be expected to start work straight away. At the Create Africa Nerve Centre, 16-hour working days are a blend of perspiration and inspiration. The 30 postcards have taken shape and the team are now designing the calendar. It's going to be monotone at the bottom and full colour on the top. The selection process continues as more images arrive in. This is, this is fantastic. Now, the, faces, the faces of Kenya, this has to be in my... Mm -hmm. Great smiles. Yeah. Like yeah. The hotel suite is getting cosy with the addition of the two new employees, Iron and Jackie, who are compiling a guest list for the launch, now only four days away. Oh, it's busy. It's crazy it's trying to put this together. Yeah, it's pretty you know? busy because the timelines are so. I mean, it's very tight, and uh, we have to get them out by tomorrow. Create Africa has been set up by Jerry in response to a challenge issued by Goals John O'Shea. However, as the deadline nears, John expresses reservations. But apart from the costs, I presume all profits will help the poorest of the poor. And there's no ulterior motive. Oh, there is an ulterior motive. Part of the profits will go to local charities, your own included. Uh, but I think you've got to have the incentive. Entrepreneurship is about, is about achieving success and building wealth. So these people will be building wealth themselves. This business will be handed over to the, the people who run it uh, in 12 months' time. 
you could end up with a hugely successful operation here. And th there is very little involvement with the poorest of the poor. The board will decide the proportion of profits that will go to, to the local charities. And the first place we'll turn when we want uh, to, to bring in more people is we'll look at your operations and see if these people are up to the mark. If they're up to the mark, we'll hire them. If they're not up to the mark, then we look somewhere else. It's as simple as that. What I would uh, argue trenchantly with you uh, uh, for is a guarantee, uh, not a promise, but a guarantee that the street children should be guaranteed a job in this enterprise if they, if they come up to the line. So otherwise, it's of no great interest to me, quite frankly. Irene and Jackie, Jerry's new recruits, start pounding the streets in downtown Nairobi, showing product samples to shop owners. We've got picture frames, we've got postcards, greeting cards. We hope to go into calendars. We actually have some calendars. Yes, I'm out and about trying to get uh, the idea of people on greeting cards uh, into the shelf. Like you, you can see, most of them already are sort of cartoons, and we have animals and all that. But the idea of people to get it on the shelves would be different. Uh, I mean, and I'm sure that would uh, catch people's attention. So here are the postcards. Jerry takes John up to his suite to show him the standard of the product range. The debate between them continues. I can understand, of course, that a business has to be successful before it can do anything for anybody else. But if it's left open to the, the best people, you're going to find uh, people who, who have no connection with poverty whatsoever, who are upper middle class, will present themselves for the jobs. And the kids that so desperately need the jobs won't get them. If it's not being done for our children, then I don't understand the Well, not the entirely, exercise. John. This is not just another NGO, John O'Shea slash Bono operation. This is a commercial business that will, as part of its ethos, serve Goal and some other charitable organisations. Yeah. And, you know, the bottom line is there are no guarantees in business. So I'm not going to guarantee, guarantee anyone jobs. I would love to have some of your people join this company in time if we can find the right people. And I, th but, and I think we will, John. I think, uh, I, you know, I think that, that this notion of handing people, guaranteeing people jobs, giving them the handouts is absolute bullshit, frankly. No, you know, I, and that's why, that's why you're running an NGO and I'm yeah. running a business. That's the key difference between the two of us. I think I, I had a fairly good idea starting out while I was dealing with, with John O'Shea. He's a bombastic character. He's almost visually illiterate, but not quite. <laughs> And I think a lot of the subtlety and the craft and the art that my team have built into this is absolutely wasted on him. I intend to work on Jerry and convince Jerry that what matters most here is providing that job outlet for young men and young women who heretofore would never expect to get a job. In creating his publishing enterprise, Jerry is determined to focus his lens on the people of Kenya rather than the wildlife that dominates his competition's postcards and calendars. Along with Alan, he travels three hours out of Nairobi to shoot Maasai warriors in a remote village. <laughs> After a, a, quite a number of years in business, it's great to get my hands back at a camera and to be able to catch, capture some real action. This is visually very, very exciting. And we've just got, Alan and myself, we've just got to capture the right moments here, and it's a, it's a great challenge. <laughs> Yeah. Jerry had done a lot of prep work on the business plan for this venture before travelling to Kenya. More elements of the plan have been put in place while in Nairobi. But Jerry will be flying back home straight after the launch, and although he will keep an eye on progress from Kerry, he will expect the local staff and local board of directors to take ownership of the venture. In six months down the line, I think we'll have had a second wave of products. Uh, we'll be profitable. And um, I think uh, the girls will have a lot more confidence at that stage and they'll really be in control. And I think uh, myself and the other folks from Ireland can maybe take a little bit more of a back seat 
uh, and I think the board will continue to advise them uh, on strategy and making introductions locally here in Nairobi. Neither myself nor anyone who's worked on this project here is going to take anything out of it. In a year's time, hopefully this business will be profitable as we expect. It should be time for me to walk away and to let them fly, fly in their own direction. OK, well, you know, it would be great if somebody actually returned my call, you know. With just a few days left to the launch, Jerry is accepting excuses from no one. It's a fairly common practice in most parts of the world to return the phone call. Jerry is determined that his range of products will be of the highest quality. I know it's cute with the kid with the cap on his face, but it's a bit too cute for this. That's, I mean, I think, I, I, I think it's just... Big Yankee Peel there. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't think so. No, it's just too messy, I think. You have to keep the quality as well, because otherwise it can't go out. Jerry won't leave anything out without everything being perfect. Which is a bit of a pain, but we have to go along with it. Over at the printers, the product is coming off the press, and Jerry is happy with the results. However, there is a problem with the quality of paper available for the postcards. A heavier grade card may have to be imported. Photography has been great, the printing is great, and the paper has to be excellent as well. So we fly in from Sweden if it has to be. That's it. The day before the launch, and the Create Africa team finally move out of the hotel and into office space at Red Sky Advertising Agency. The agency agreed to give Jerry an office space free for a year, from which Irene and Jackie will operate the business. We are offering a quality product that is unmatched out there. It, you, nothing else can compare to that. And the one thing, when customers walk into a shop, they don't think, how much is this? They think, this is beautiful. I mean, we want to, we want to be the best product, but also the most profitable product in terms of sell-through for the shops. So we've got, to, we've got to position ourselves as the number one supplier for those people. Mm -hmm. So we've got to, you've got to figure out what, what that, what that need, means. Let's not lock down our pricing. We should have a first look at the pricing at your suggestion. And, try, and I'd like you to be able to justify that pricing, why we should be doing it. In the coming months, Jerry will keep an eye on progress remotely from Ireland, while the local board members will be on hand to advise Jackie and Irene. John O'Shea has been, has been bending my ear and perhaps trying to change the vision of what this is about into something that is a goal project. This is essentially a profit-making entrepreneurial activity that builds sustainable business in Africa. Yes, where we want to have a contribution from the sale of these products to charities. The board has got to work that out in, in a way that's, that's going to allow this business to grow and allow these two women to become uh, uh, very wealthy and uh, perhaps some of the other people who will join the business in time as well. And so launch day arrives. Jerry and his team had set a deadline of 10 days to create a new African business from scratch. They made it, but only just. I've worked with Jerry for six years and I've been in on a few of these kind of uh, little ventures. So, uh, yeah, I, I always thought it was going to come off. I didn't think it was going to come off because I hadn't worked with Jerry before. But uh, now I see that there's a certain style he has and we get things done. What we wanted to achieve was something that created high value and we wanted to create a brand that represented creativity and quality and that reflected a positive image of Kenya. I'm very confident for the future. We've got a fantastic product, uh, very visually appealing and uh, very commercially viable. And we've got two great employees here and a very committed board of directors. So Create Africa is on the road and it's going to succeed. Ten weeks later, and the Create Africa venture has made a solid start. Back on his home turf, Jerry has the time to reflect on what's been achieved. We're two months down the line, and now the business is up and running as a trading entity. We're breaking even. We've got a product in 23 shops, um, and uh, that's probably about 25% uh, of the market. Uh, so we're starting to, to attack the market in Mombasa this week. The second part is to start building the online business, the website's up and running, uh, and the third part is to look at image licensing and see where we can get some revenue there. I think the message for other people is that you can go and share your skills and your experience with other people in parts of the world that aren't as lucky as us. And I think this project has proven that Irish entrepreneurship can help other people to help themselves. 
Next week, Michael Carey, a giant in the Irish food industry, travels to Malawi, a country stricken by famine. Can this award-winning entrepreneur make a real impact in a country where food security is so fragile? Yeah.